So I'm back and continuing chapter five. While I waited for my hot chocolate, I went and sat down in my chair and looked out of the window. Our flat isn't very big, but we have a small table near the window with four chairs around it. I always sit in the chair next to the fridge because I like being able to open the fridge door without getting up. It's like looking into an extra room in the house, but one that's filled with food instead. Whenever I go to my Uncle Lenny's house to look in his fridge, his one's so big it almost touches the ceiling. If he had to, my Uncle Lenny could live in his fridge. He'd have to take out all the shelves and things, but he could definitely fit in it standing up if he wanted to. I think it's good to have a fridge you can stand up in. It means you'll never run out of food like we do sometimes. And if you do, you can go and have a wonder in it. When Mum had finished making the hot chocolate and her tea, she sat down in her chair, which was opposite mine, and took out two lumps of sugar from the sugar jar. Keeping them balanced on a spoon, she slowly swirled them into the tea in little circles. We both watched them get smaller and smaller until they disappeared. Mum, can you tell me then? What's a refugee kid? I mean, where do they come from? Mum gave me a look. She has at least 20 different looks that give me a secret message and I know what all of them mean. This one meant, stop asking me. And then she said, Do you remember those lifeboats on the telly, darling? The ones with lots of people squeezed in that you were asking about? I nodded. It had been in the middle of the summer holidays. Mum and I were in the sitting room. She was doing a crossword and I'd been colouring in some drawings and the news was on in the background. The TV screen had suddenly changed from a woman reporter standing on a beach to a video of lots of people in boats in the middle of an ocean, all looking scared. I had felt sorry for them and asked Mum what was going on. Do you remember what I said? asked Mum. You said that they were trying to find somewhere new to live because their home wasn't as nice to live in anymore. Exactly, my love. They were what people call refugees. And children like the new boy in your class are called refugee kids because they've had to leave their homes and travel very far to try and find a new house to live in. Do you mean like Dina? I asked, wondering if Dina was going to be called a refugee kid in her new school too. She had to move to Wales because her mum and dad couldn't find a house in London. Mum shook her head. Not exactly, she said. Dina's mum and dad wanted to move. They had a choice and they wanted to live in a much bigger, nicer house than the one they already had. But refugee, refugee children have been forced to run away because bad people have made it impossible for them to stay. Those bad people drop bombs on their houses and destroy all the beautiful parts of their cities. And the places where the refugees used to live have become so horrible and scary that they can't live in them anymore. So they walk for miles and miles and get into boats to travel to countries they've never been to before and go to strange places they don't know, just so they can find somewhere that's safe enough to live again. Oh, I said quietly. I wondered what the refugees had done to make the bad people so angry. Last year, two first graders in school had tripped over Brendan the bully to get back at him for chasing them, which made him so angry he smashed open their lunch boxes and stomped on all their food. What did the refugees do to make the bad people want to hurt them, I asked, thinking it must have been something very bad to make someone want to drop a bomb on their houses. Mum shook her head. Nothing at all, darling. The bad people are just much stronger than they are and like to feel big and powerful by bullying them. You see, some people think that by taking things away from other people and hurting them, it gives them more power. And the more power they have, the more they want and the greedier they get. So they go on hurting more and more people until everyone wants to run away. Just like the bullies at school, I said, feeling angry. Well, I guess it is sort of like that, smiled Mum, except the bullies the refugees are running away from are a lot bigger and far more horrible. They force people to leave everything they ever had behind, even the people they love the most in the world. I thought about the new boy and felt sorry for him. Maybe he had been forced to leave behind lots of things he loved the most in the world, and that's why he didn't talk to anyone and needed so much seclusion. I tried to think of what I would leave behind if I had to run away from the bullies, but I couldn't decide. All I know is that I could never leave my dad's record player behind, or his favourite hammer, which is still in the bottom kitchen drawer. Mum got up and took her mug to the sink. Now, I know you want to make friends with this new boy, but you mustn't be too eager. He'll need lots of time and space first, OK? I nodded, even though I didn't really understand what she meant. If I was the new boy, 
I would use all my time to make as many friends as I could, especially if I had just run away from bullies that were bigger and more horrible than the school bullies. I wondered if I should tell my mum about the, all the lemon sherbets and white mice and the orange with the smiley face I'd given him, but then she said, the world has never been kind to refugees, in a sad way. She sounded just like she did whenever she talked about my dad. So even though I wanted to ask at least four more questions, I decided not to say anything else. Now, drink up and off to bed, and I'll come and tuck you in in just a few minutes. Mum came and ruffled my hair. She always ruffles my hair when she wants me to think she's happier than she really is. I drank the rest of the hot chocolate as quickly as I could and ran to bed. Mum only ever tucks me into bed when she's home early, so this was a special treat. I love being tucked into bed, even more than I love beating everyone else in a race or scoring a goal. It's the best feeling in the world to be wrapped up all warm and fuzzy in a blanket by someone you love more than anyone else on the planet and who loves you right back. As I lay waiting for Mum to come in, I thought about all the things she had said, about the bombs and the boats and the bad people who were so greedy they made everyone want to run away from them. I had so much to tell Josie and Tom and Michael, especially as I don't think their mums and dads would have told them half as much as my mum told me. It's one of the things I love most about my mum. She always tries to answer my questions, no matter how tired she is or how hard my questions are. And she always tells the absolute truth. Michael's parents are always saying, not now, dear, or we'll tell you when you're older. And Josie's mum keeps telling her that girls are meant to be quiet and not ask so many questions. But my mum never says anything like that to me. I think it's because of all the books she reads. Mum says that the best books leave you with more questions than answers, and that's the fun part. You have to try and find the answers yourself somewhere else. And Dad used to say the more questions you ask, the more clever you'll be. But that's the only way you'll ever know more than you already do. I think this is the first time in my life that I've ever wanted to be extra, extra clever about anything. Because by the time Mum had come to tuck me in for the night, I had a long list of questions in my head that I wanted to ask the new boy. Eleven, to be precise. And this is what they looked like. One, where did you have to run away from? Two, what language do you speak? Three, who's the woman in the red scarf? Four, do you have any brothers or sisters? Five, what did the bullies do to make you run away? Six, did you have to get on a boat like the people in the news? Seven, what sports do you like best? Eight, what's your favourite fruit? Nine, how far did you have to walk to get away from the bullies? Ten, do you like it here or do you miss your old house more? Eleven, do you have a best friend? My 11 questions would help me know everything I needed to know about the new boy so that I could be his friend. And I was going to find out the answer to every single one of them. Right then, chapter six will be coming up soon. Bye for now.